Hey guys, Bondo here. So this is part six of my tiny house slash hunting trailer, mobile hunting camp that I'm building here. So uh, if you've been following along, you know what I'm up to here. I, I took the floor off of it and uh, I'm cleaning up the frame here. I took it outside. Obviously this frame was used before, so it had surface rust and stuff on it. So I took it outside with a grinder and um, just ground everything off of there. And used a, um, I used a flap wheel a lot to clean a lot of the other rust and stuff off and a, a wire brush on my grinder. So that's what I'm doing here. Guys, uh, in this video I'll show you how I got the metal from the Amish and I put it down and got my floor back on and bolted on. I'll show you how I did that. And I painted the frame in this video. And I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit um, as the video progresses about insulation in the floor whether I should go with Roxel or the spray foam. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit down the road here in the video a little bit further. Thanks for watching. Three hours outside, sanding and grinding this thing down, flap wheels and grinding discs. So I got it pretty good. I think it's ready for, get some primer on there coat the bare spots with primer and then uh, hit it with some paint so that's what I'm gonna do it's pretty the frames really cold right now so I'm gonna wait a little bit I just got the wood boiler ripping so let it warm up a little bit because the the steels ice cold from being outside I didn't it was really dusty sanding this thing so the the rust and stuff was just flying all over. So that's why I did it outside. It was a lot better. This is the paint I'm gonna use. Tractor supply stuff. Magic tractor and truck and implement. Exterior oil base enamel. Gloss black. I got this primer here. Great primer. And I got some hardener. It'll actually make it dry faster and it'll be more durable. So that's what I'm gonna do tonight. Get paint. I'm just gonna use a roller and roll it on there with a cigar roller. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna spray it because I'll have spray everywhere. It'll get a good heavy coat on there with a roller. So heading to the Amish guys to try to get some metal for the tiny house camp i'm gonna get some uh i'm gonna see if i can buy some flat metal that hasn't been bent yet i'm not sure uh how wide their metal is but i'm hoping it's four foot wide because the uh, the floor is eight foot so i was hoping to get a couple pieces 24 foot long and i can just have one seam down the middle maybe tape the seam or whatever that's where i'm heading right now not sure if they'll have like galvan galvanized or it'll just be painted or whatever, but and, uh, that's what I'm going to see what they got. Maybe galvanized would be better underneath there because it's going to get, you know, some weather. It's going to be the bottom of the trailer. So that's what I'm doing. I'll uh, see if I can video a little bit when I get there. So there's the Amish farm coming up here that makes the metal. I'm not sure. I've never been here before, so I'm not sure where to get the metal. I think it's on the right hand side here. So, that's what that looks like. Custom made roofing. No Sunday sales. Oh, there's a couple of them right there. Let's see what we can do here. Must lift everything with these beams. Yeah. 
to make couplas. They got couplas okay. here. He's got the brown. Is yeah. that? Yeah. I got that in number one and number two. And you're gonna have. Um, I'll be right back. Five, six. So yeah, that's the place, guys. I went in. I don't know if I really could do much videoing inside there, but it's pretty cool in there. He's got like beams in there. You can see outside here, he's got like all these beams with cranes. That's how they move everything. They pick the coils up with those uh, overhead beams right there and they can roll. That beam goes all the way through their shop and that's how they pick the coils up and stuff. It's pretty neat. They have a ton of coils in there. They have, uh, they actually, they don't have a roll former. They have a press that they make the stuff out of. They make their uh, metal with a press. It's got a big diesel engine on it. So that's kind of neat. Instead of like a roll former that pulls it through. And uh, they have a slitter in there. They can make custom trim. And uh, pretty neat. They have a bender in there, a big brake. They can break up to 18 gauge steel so pretty neat setup in there never been there before so here's the receipt from the amish i got two pieces 24 foot two inches by 48 inches which will be perfect because my trailer is uh eight feet wide so actually it'd be better if it was a little bit wider but I'm, i'll just put a little strip in between the two underneath little uh, trim piece or something so 127.88 not bad not bad at all their uh, metal he said is like 70 cents a square foot they sell it by the square foot it's actually the same price if it's roll formed or uh, whatever however they form it or if it's flat so Obviously, this is just flat because what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm going to put it. It's going to go right here on top of this surface, the metal is. And then my floor, which is right there, is going to go down over top of the metal. So I'll put the, it's brown metal. I'll put the brown side down. And then my frame will go over top of it. And then my bolts will go through my frame, through the metal, through these tabs. And then... Uh, you know, I can screw the metal to the wood frame too. So, you know, to keep it from uh, having any ripples or anything. And that's just going to protect the bottom of the um, floor system from rodents or uh, road debris stuff. And it's just a 26 gauge metal. So should be plenty strong enough. It's the same metal they use on most, um, most corrugated metal for roofing and stuff. It's the same thickness. So you can get thicker. But 26 is pretty standard gauge that they use. So that's what I'm going to do. But I can't get it till Saturday. So today is uh, uh, Monday. But I can't pick it up till Saturday. But I got painting to do and a few other things here. And I got some jack stands coming that I'm going to put under these corners here. That are going to hold the trailer up here. Kind of balance it so it doesn't have a lot of uh, deflection when you get inside of it. So that's where I'm at. I'm on a creeper underneath this bad boy, painting the bottom side of this. I painted the top, but no, that's what I'm doing. A little upside down action. 
Uh, if it was summertime, I'd take it outside and spray it, but it's winter, guys. In summer, I'll be pouring concrete. Hunter, where are you, bud? Hunter, what are you doing, buddy? Come here. What you doing, bud? Hey, what you doing? You gonna help dad? You gonna help me? Nope. You don't want nothing to do with helping me, do you? You gonna help me, bud? two four foot pieces here four foot wide this is the brown 26 gauge metal got from that amish guy i'm just gonna flip it upside down so that the brown side is down that's gonna be the bottom of my trailer so that's what i'm gonna do terry's gonna help me okay guys so we got the metal here and uh we unrolled it on the trailer and actually it was brown side facing up the way they had it rolled. Um, the Amish guy rolled it up so that the paint side was in to protect it. But w when we unrolled it, here it is opposite of what we wanted. So me and Terry um, tried to flip it, but couldn't really flip it. It was too flimsy. So I rolled it up like this, and he pulled it backwards, and that worked pretty good. We could get it um, turned around because I wanted the paint side down just because that's the side that's going to get all the weather and everything. So not that you're going to see it, but it should be uh, more durable with the painted side down. So that's what we're doing here. And then uh, you can see the frame to the right there, the floor frame I had taken off and leaned up against the, um, in the shop there. That's going to go right down on top of here. And then uh, I got underneath the trailer. I didn't video, it, but I got underneath the trailer and, um, with my drill and I drilled up through the the little metal tabs that I got welded onto the frame with the holes in them. I drilled up through. Once we got the um, wood frame lined up exactly where we wanted it and got the metal all set where we wanted it. And it ends up good because this metal was a little bit wider. It was actually 48 and a half inches wide. So my trailer here is 40, is, um, is eight foot wide, so um, 96 inches. So it's just a little bit um, wider, the, the four footers. If they were exactly four foot, it would have left, um, they would have just had to butt up against each other. And I would have had to maybe put like a molding piece or something under there. 
but seems how they were 48 and a half, I could actually lap it a little bit in the middle. So there's only that one seam down the whole middle, which I thought was good. Is uh, that should uh, this should definitely keep any kind of critters or anything out of that out of that um, the camp here and a nice weather barrier between my floor system. Um, so now that you guys see how this is going down, basically my insulation cavity is that three and a half inch floor because I don't want to really put any insulation underneath on the frame or anything. So I got three and a half inches to insulate. I thought about using Roxel insulation. Um, not exactly sure. I could look it up the R, on the R value, but the Roxel was I definitely don't want to use fiberglass and I started pricing up foam board and the Roxa was a lot cheaper than foam board and it seemed like it was going to be a lot easier but I do a lot of spray foam work with uh, I got a contractor that that um, sprays a lot of my co underneath my concrete and I was talking to him and I think he's gonna um, give me a decent price on spray foam in this thing three three and a half inches thick let me know what you guys think about that um, you know, I think the spray foam is a better option. It's going to give me air air barrier and everything else. But let me know what you think in the comments on that, guys. I appreciate the feedback. Hey guys, so we got the frame on here. Got the bolts down through there. I haven't tightened anything up yet, but this is how she's going to be. Got a nice 26 gauge bottom there. I can get underneath and screw this up to here too. So that'll be good. That's how it's going to be.